Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and on this beautiful sunny morning I've come for a walk to look for some inspiration for the hut that's going to go under my viaduct arches. Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I've built a small hut to go under one of the viaduct arches on my N-gauge model railway. This was an absolutely basic build. It's just a box with a top on really, but it still used a lot of techniques that I use in my bigger buildings. So I thought I'd do a detailed look at how I made this hut so that we can see some of the things that I sometimes skip over on my grander videos. Join me then for a simple shed, the basics of building. Every time I walk past this hut near Ilkley, I am inspired by its characterful appearance and I've always intended to have it somewhere in Chandwell. And I used Google Maps and estimates based on the size of the door to work out its dimensions. I measured the space that I have to decide on its length. Using the photo of the real thing, I adjusted it in the free application GIMP to make the lines as straight and as perpendicular as possible. So I will be using this photo as the actual model's texture. Yes, it is a very basic building. It's just a simple box, but I think it's still important to give it some definition. And for that, I use layers. Looking at the front, you can see a brick foundation, which is recessed from the wooden paneling. That's two layers. The barge board sits proud of the wood. So I think it's three layers in total. I drew the shed in Inkscape to the outer dimensions that I wanted. I decided to add the brick foundations to the inner base layer. Because I was going to use half millimeter gray board, I knew from experience that a sheet of that with a paper texture on top is about 0.7 millimeters thick. I therefore cut away 0.7 millimeters from each side of the end pieces. And then I adjusted the height of the walls to match. To help me work out how the pieces will arrange, I use a simple plan to track which bit will butt against which. I printed these onto A4 sticky labels and I selected a sheet of half millimeter card. I always take care to cut away the unused label as close to the drawing as possible. This means that I can put the offcut through the printer again and keep wastage to an absolute minimum. Once stuck to the card, I use the big knife to cut the straight pieces. I use multiple light strokes and I cut all of the lines one way before turning the card and doing the other way. Once I have a kit of parts, it's time to glue them together using PVA glue. These right angled jigs from Scale Model Scenery are perfect for this kind of job. I hold the end wall in place with a clamp and then I use a thin bead of my thin PVA along the end of the wall. With that clamped into place, I cut fillets of offcuts which are exactly 90 degrees and I glue these into the edge to help maintain that angle. The glue can splurge out of the sides, so before it is fully dry, I prise the pieces off the jig with my scalpel. Because I drew the plan earlier, I know which bit butts against which. This makes it simple to join the two wall parts together and keep them straight. With one in the jig, I just added the other one, taking care to make sure that the right parts are touching in the right places. So here's the inner frame. Now for the bricks. There are many ways to use texture so that you don't have any visible white paper edges. I decided for this one to avoid any folds and make the pieces as crisp as possible. The construction plan helps here too. We know that the card has butted up against its neighbours. This means that the texture on the end walls needs to be extended by the width of the two end pieces. So I add on 0.7mm to each end before adding the brick courses. To avoid the walls being of different thicknesses and appearing wavy, I cut the texture pieces as full size components rather than just a strip of bricks. I included the door on this layer too. I used a grey watercolour pencil to colour the paper edges. The bricks aren't grey, but I find that at this tiny size, grey is a super substitute for almost any colour. It hides the bright white and just helps the whole thing blend in together later on. I used PVA to simply attach the texture to the card base. Here are the edges I was talking about earlier. Although I made the brick course longer, it wasn't quite long enough. I'm almost a millimetre out. I should have measured the building instead of relying on my guesses. But since it's only two courses of bricks high, I decided to live with it and just colour the card in with the pencil. This was glued on in the same way as before. Once done, the brick foundation looks good and there are no white edges showing. I just applied the photo of the real thing to the shape I had drawn in Inkscape to give me the front. Since the back will never be seen, I did a very rough clone and patch edit to remove the door from the back wall. I built up the sides with cloned pieces of the front. The real building has concrete block sides 
but I liked the idea of the blue cladding going right the way around the building. Although with hindsight, I don't know how they managed to ever squeeze in there to paint it in the first place. The outer layer was done in the same way as the inner. I adjusted the dimensions of the walls to account for the wooden panels stopping above the bricks. I left a small part to represent the door frame. I used my scalpel rather than the big knife for finer cutting like this. Once again, I used the grey watercolour pencil to colour the paper edges so that they don't stand out on the finished building. Just a delicate rub is all it needs. I then drop the texture on top of the cut card. It floats on the wet PVA for a while, which makes it easy to adjust the alignment. Despite best efforts, cutting by hand is not an exact science, and I had about a quarter of a millimetre of card showing along the bottom edge. So I just ever so carefully trimmed it off with the scalpel, and I added some more grey to the edges, for good measure. I added a couple of grey to blue faded rectangles on the inside of the door aperture, and then these just wrap around the inside. I score the fold line with the back of my scalpel, apply a little glue, and then use my crochet hook to tightly fold the paper around the door opening. The completed part then just drops onto the inner part. I took care to get it aligned, and you can see the overhang into which the roof will go later. I checked the measurement of the outer wall, and dropped this into the gap between the front and the back. Everything is lined up really nicely, just ready for the texture now. I decided to add some inner support at this point, and then just drop inside with PVA. Learning my lesson from last time, I made the texture a little bit too long for the sides, so I used the scalpel to trim away slices until it was just right. I coloured the edges grey, applied PVA, and smoothed it into place. So the barge boards were printed onto paper, roughly cut out, and stuck to another two layers of paper. I still hadn't decided whether this was going to be a scout hut or a wood turner's, so I printed signs for both. These went onto two sheets of paper. The three layer barge boards were cut out, and I used a marker pen to colour the edges here. The part was too delicate to easily use the pencil. The marker works with much lighter strokes, and it drops on top of a bead of PVA glue. The shed is a tight fit under the arch. It's very small and has no windows. I therefore decided to use the more abstract sign of the wood turner. The tiny sign, only 3mm by 2mm, and with lettering only a quarter of a millimetre tall, dropped onto a blob of glue with the aid of the tip of a pin. I filled in the roof with a piece of card to bring it to the right height. One of them didn't quite fit, so I trimmed it by eye. I downloaded the roof texture from textures.com. The roof will hardly be visible, so I didn't really want to spend too much time on it. But I was keen to introduce a little bit of 3D relief, if possible. I therefore, in Inkscape, added guidelines at the end of each panel. Then, using my scalpel, I added small slices at the end of each guideline. Turned the paper over, and then used the back of my scalpel to score between the slits. I used a lot of pressure to get a really deep score. This has added really nice ridged lines across the edge of each panel. I then just dropped it into place on a bed of glue. I had not intended to add gutters, but in the end I changed my mind. I roughly measured the length of the building and marked a piece of half millimetre card. I used a sharpie marker to colour in the card, top, edge and bottom. I sliced off a piece of the card and then glued it edge on along the shed. I did exactly the same for the downspout. A simple strip of blue paper was used as a roof ridge capping. With the paper wet with glue, it moulds into place quite nicely. I use AK Interactive Matte Varnish and simply brush it on. I take the brush strokes in the same direction as the building's material and I cover the whole thing. I will apply a coat of Ultra Matte later to remove the slight sheen. I don't use Ultra Matte first as it can dry a little cloudy when applied directly to printed parts. So I hope that you found it interesting to watch a complete building take shape from start to finish. I've still skipped quite quickly over all kinds, so if you have any questions, please do ask them in the comments. If you'd like a slower step-by-step -step tutorial kind of video, please let me know. I've never really done one of these before, and I'm not sure if it would be interesting for you or not. Please join me next week, where we will take a look at how I get on with the ground around the hut. Until then then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.